So by stopping Jorge Linares in the 10th round to win the WBA lightweight championship of the world, Vasily Lomachenko becomes the fastest boxer in terms of total fights, not necessarily age because of his amateur career, to win three world championships. So as always, I may or may not be an expert, but I am a longtime fan with an informed and knowledgeable opinion. So Jorge Linares is a good boxer. He's somewhat overlooked because he's from Venezuela and has fought a lot of his career and has been based out of Japan for a while. I'm not sure if he still is or not, um, but he's, it's been that way for a while with uh, Linares. Um, <clears throat> and let's face it, it's as far as getting noticed in boxing, it's an advantage to be from either the United States, Mexico, or, or England. Those are like the three big boxing countries. And that's pretty much where the sport centers around. Yes, it's an international sport, but those are part of the three main centers of, of the sport. I have a feeling someone going to chime in about Germany. Um, <clears throat> but I think Germany is a, a close second to to United States, Mexico, and Eng England in terms of, of boxing. Anyways, a little bit of tangent there, but Linares is a good boxer, has all the skills in the world, or a lot, at least a lot of skills, and it's just under the radar because he's not from the, one of the big three or four co uh, countries in the sport of boxing. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, Vasily Menchenko is you know, a pretty well-known boxer, and he's not from the United States, he's not from Mexico, he's not from England, he's not even from Germany. So why is he, with only 12 fights, more known? Well, part of it is because of the uh, extensive amateur background, the two Olympic gold medals. Um, part of it is he's considered like one of the top pound for pound boxers in the sport, and that will always get you some, some notice. The other thing is that he has a base operations in, in California. Uh, his manager is Igus Klimas, I hope I didn't say his name right. Um, he manages a lot of the, uh, the Russian and other Eastern European boxers who are now professionals. And he has a base operation out of Oxnard, California. I believe he bought out the uh, Robert Garcia Boxing Academy there. And Garcia moved, they believe, to Riverside. I have to check up on that uh, at some other time. But, Lomachenko has a, a base operations in the United States. He, I believe he travels back and forth between the two countries, but he has base operations in America, which is a huge advantage to him. But we're not here to talk about that. Let's talk a little bit about what I saw in the fight. So I have to admit, I completely missed uh, the first round of the fight, so I can't really comment on the first round. So rounds two through five, and even up to knockdown on the sixth, I thought Jorge Linares was definitely showing his skills, having his moments, but I just thought uh, Vasily Lomachenko was doing more, and having more more moments, and just doing overall better work in those in those uh, rounds two through five, and even even through the knockdown, uh, they suffered in round six. So, at the end of round six, another round was going to give to Vasily Lomachenko. Jorge Linares catches him with just a straight right down the pipe and puts him on his, on his butt. Uh, he's up quickly, uh, finished out the round, but that kind of turned the scorecards a little bit upside down, giving Linares a 10-8 round. I think the seventh round was the most pivotal round of the fight. I say that was the most pivotal round of the fight because I think even though Jorge Linares showed his skill, and again, he's a greatly skilled fighter, he's a really good skilled fighter, Lomachenko is clearly a more skilled fighter than Linares. And if Lomachenko was ever hurt, it was at that time, you know, it's the end of the round, you know, just meant to recover between rounds. That was uh, Linares' window of opportunity. And in the seventh round, I believe that Lomachenko just didn't let him take the initiative. I don't think he did anything in particular to necessarily dominate the round, but. You know, he wasn't engaging, he was staying away, taking his time. In my opinion, maybe he was slightly better than Lenars in that round, but most importantly, he didn't let Lenars take the initiative. 
my initial feelings is that it's probably a 10-10 round because, you know, Lomachenko didn't really do anything either in that round. But because he didn't allow Lenar to take initiative, I, I probably leaned to him in that round. But I thought the seventh round was the most pivotal round of the fight. And I, I think that if the fight went on, despite the close official scorecards, Lomachenko would probably have pulled away. Um, but that's just my speculation. So, in spite of the fact that Jorge Lara shows his skills and had his moments in rounds two through five, I thought those were clearly Lomachenko rounds. And I thought the Sixers had that way too, of course, before the knockdown. And then there's the seventh round, which I just, which I just talked about. Which, you know, Lomachenko didn't let Naras take the initiative. Uh, rounds 8, 9, and even if the knockout, knockout in round 10, I thought were close rounds. But whereas I thought Lomachenko clearly won, won rounds 2 through 5, I thought he slightly won rounds uh, 8, 9, and was winning round 10, of course, that knockdown, which turned out to be the, the knockout of the fight. So, then came when Lomachenko lands a body shot Linares and knocks him down. Uh, Linares did beat the count, kind of, but was slow responding to the referee who who called off the fight. So it's officially a TKO win. It does end the uh, corner shot finish streak that uh, Lomachenko had since uh, the Nicholas Waters fight. I believe Nicholas Waters, uh, Malinga, I, I don't understand his name right, uh, Mariaga, I believe. I have to check that. Um, Jason Sosa and Gamer Rigandale. Uh, but it's still a TKO uh, win for Lomachenko in the 10th round. He is the new WBA lightweight champion of the world. A again, uh, the fourth, you know, third weight division in 12 fights, fast to multiple weight divisions in, in number of fights. Uh, clearly not this at the youngest age. Anyways, he's the new WBA champion at lightweight. So I want to close the video out by talking about the, the setup of the body punch that that won the fight for Solomachenko. You know, he threw a series of shots to the head while, pivot, while pivoting around Linares. Uh, the one punch that really caught my eye was one that didn't land. I'm not even sure it was supposed to land. It kind of like went past his forehead like that, kind of, uh, uh, Linares' forehead. And that kind of got, you know, that, that plus all the other punches before that, got Lenars to, you know, put his guard up more to his head and expose his body. And that's when Lomachenko landed that body punch and that won the fight. So that's how I saw the fight. Uh, how did you see the fight? Do you think that the scorecards were correct being close? Do you think Lomachenko had a bigger lead? Do you think, think Lenars had, 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 a, had a bigger lead? Uh, as always, I'm curious to know. Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, you like what I do on here on Sports Talk with Troy, please give a subscribe, uh, a thumbs up, all that fun stuff. As always, I may or may not be an expert, but I am a longtime fan with informed, knowledgeable opinion. I, I thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you next video.